Well, in the chronological survey, I, I'm only giving myself uh, really today and tomorrow to, to deal with the Greek uh, effect, which is absurd because it is there is just so much. So I'm just going to touch on this stuff. But first of all, the other city in that horrible story I told you about, Oedipus, the other city was Corinth. I'm quite sure I didn't look it up. Um, didn't look it up, but it, it came to me when I was listening to it. Uh, all right, uh, I'm just touching this stuff. The Greeks, they began history as we know it. A guy named Herodotus uh, is known as the first historian. He, uh, he uh, began to try to prove things and look for more than one sources. So our attitude toward history really comes from the Greeks. Math, Greek math. Well, I think Euclid's geometry is, is Greek. Algebra is different. Algebra bears the effect of the Arabs, but uh, math, really, as we know it, comes from them. Uh, I like to mention Pythagoras. That may be an AS. I don't know. Everyone always says the Pythagorean theorem, but Pythagoras was a guy, a brilliant guy, uh, and he came up with this. Usually kids can rattle it off. It goes something like a squared plus b squared equals c squared, uh, where a, b, and c are the sides of a right triangle. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the example that carpenters know, uh, or should know, is if you, had, if, if you went out into a field and you had to get a perfectly accurate right triangle, all you'd need is three rocks and a stick. That's all you'd really need. A, a, a little bit of string might help. But you wouldn't need any instruments. You don't need a transit. You don't need a square. Because if that stick, if you took a spot right there and then uh, went, uh, took that stick and laid it down three times in that direction, put a rock there, and then laid the stick down four times in this direction, put a rock there, now you'd have to go back and forth. You'd have to keep moving the rocks around a little bit. But when you came to the point where that same stick five times went on a straight line right there, you would have a perfectly uh, true right angle. Uh, nine, three squared is nine, four squared is 16. You add them together, you got 25, and that's five squared. I always think of a buddy of mine in high school named Gary Fitz. He went on to do, his career was in mathematics at Ber Berkeley, I think. Uh, and uh, at a certain point I asked him, in all this math you've studied, because he'd studied the kind of math where only mathematicians could understand each other. I said, what's the most amazing thing you've run into? And his comment was the Pythagorean theorem. The fact that that would be true. He finds that so amazing. And it really is. <laughs> All right, uh, music. Uh, our music, the way we have it now, we owe it really to the Greeks. Uh, and the easiest way to show that, if I had a guitar, and I'm just going too fast, if I had a guitar or a, or a piano or something that would make, well, it wouldn't even, I could sing it, I, I guess. Uh, we basically have two modes. Oh, they don't, well, I'm not saying. Uh, anyway, that's minor mode. Most of our music is major mode. Da, 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 da. Uh, we have two modes. The Greeks had, I think, seven of them. Uh, oh, I can't remember what the other. Dorian mode was one of them. Aeolian mode. They had seven. But but in with music, uh, virtually all cultures found the fifth and the octave. But then how you separate those notes uh, into how many how many separate notes do you find between the within the octave? That varies from culture to culture. Basically, we use the Greeks, um, uh, which involves, well, see, I, I just don't have the keyboard. I, I, might, I might show you more about this later. Athletics. Well, the Greeks uh, started the Olympics. Uh, they felt that athletics was uh, important. And uh, the very fact that, that in our school systems, here at least here in the United States, sports, sports, this, this is part of an education here. Uh, uh, you know, schools will spend a tremendous amount of money to build something called a gymnasium, and you've got gym class. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, 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 they don't call it gym class. Phys ed, phys physical education, physical education. Uh, that's a Greek idea. That it wasn't enough to just develop your mind; you should develop your body. Uh, and uh, and you know, you think of how. What a major part that is to to, uh, to people modern day competitive sports, uh, and that leads right into art, Greek art. Uh, it was realistic. 
And the example that I use, I think I spelled that right, the Lacoon group, uh, they could would take marble. Well, what was so different about Greek art? It was really the first time in the world that the artists tried very hard and succeeded in making art look very realistic, very realistic. Uh, I said, see the Louvre. Well, if, if you go to the Louvre in Paris sometimes, it's full of Greek sculptures. I love them. And the Roman ones look about the same, because the Romans, I'll be telling you later this week, they basically copied the Greeks. Um, it was realistic. And not only that, the Greeks admired an athletic human body. They thought of that as a beautiful thing. And so much of their sculpture is done that way. I know as a kid I used to wonder, how come they always doing naked people, these sculptures? Is that right? Well, the Greeks felt that the human body, a physical, a physically fit, athletic human body, was a beautiful thing. They, they did the gods to look like humans. That was a new idea. Science with Archimedes. Uh, our ideas of science. Now, Archimedes is the most famous of these scientists. And I put down Archimedes streaking. Think of that as a story. Uh, that's not what it's usually called. The way that story goes is that Archimedes was approached by a king because he thought his crown was not pure gold. And he wanted Archimedes to prove it. But the king liked the crown. He didn't want to destroy it. There was a way to prove it if he melted it down into a block and then took a block of pure gold and figured out exactly the same size if they were the same. Well, then he'd know it was gold. But he, the king didn't want to destroy the crown. So how to do that? Archimedes, there was no known way because it was this odd-shaped object. How do you figure out what the volume of it is? If it were a cube, sure. Uh, and uh, as he was pondering this, he went to the public baths. And when he sank down in the tub, he noticed what uh, uh, what you notice. I, I'd always say to the kids, uh, you know, what happens if you sink down in a tub? And the kids say, well, the water comes up. And if you've got a big butt, the water comes up a lot. If you've got a skinny little butt, the water only comes up a little bit. And what that water is doing is it's responding to the size of your body as you sink into it, regardless of the shape. Well, Archimedes sank down. He saw that. He suddenly realized it. Uh, I should have put down the word Eureka, according to the story. He, uh, he, he jumped out of, the, uh, out of the tub, went running down the streets, naked, dripping wet, shouting Eureka. Uh, which is Greek for I found it, and it's been used ever since uh, when you suddenly make a discovery. He said, Eureka. What he had figured out was displacement. Displacement. Uh, I, I can sometimes connect the kids by saying, for example, motorcycle engines, you measure them in cc's, don't you? Uh, cubic centimeters. What is that? And it's the volume of the cylinders. Uh, and, and through that, then, specific gravity. Uh, eventually. Well, I guess he figured that out, that every object had a specific gravity, that the displacement of a, uh, of a, a, a block of aluminum, they wouldn't have had that then, is going to be different from the, or the, the weight of the same volume of these various things is going to be different. Well, anyway, I'm rushing through this stuff because I'm trying to show you, lead up to, and tomorrow especially, how the Greeks have so profoundly affected us, just touching every one of these subjects. See you tomorrow.